everyone and welcome back to my channel. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, I know you won't regret it. Today's lesson is on Venn diagrams and Venn diagrams are a graphical representation of sample space. Let's get straight into it. A survey was conducted amongst 200 people determining whether they like milk or cream in their coffee. 72 like cream, 110 like milk and 40 like milk and cream. Now, when you're drawing a Venn diagram, you need to decide whether your circles are going to overlap or not. They overlap if there's an intersection. They overlap if there's something in common. They overlap if there's an and. So in this case, we have people that like milk and cream. And the minute we have milk and cream, we know that our two circles are going to overlap. There's going to be an intersection and that's where we always start. Just remember, you always start in your intersection. So now we're going to draw our Venn diagram. So our Venn diagram is going to be a rectangular block that is our sample space or that is a representation of our sample space. Outside our Venn diagram, we know that we're going to list 200 because within that entire sample space, within that rectangle, there needs to be 200 people. Now, what are the events that we are comparing? We are comparing milk and cream, and we know that there is an overlap. So we're going to draw our two circles, milk and cream, and we know that there is an overlap. So we have milk and we have cream. The information that was given says that 72 people liked cream and 110 liked milk. So 72 liked cream. So we're going to put 72 by cream and 110 by milk. Now what that helps us to see is that within our full rectangle we have 200 people. Within the cream circle we have 72 and within the milk circle, we have 110. And then we're going to fill in all the information around that. Now, when I say fill in all the information around that, what I wanna draw your attention to is what that means. That means that there needs to be information in the sample space. There needs to be information in that part of the milk only circle, in the intersection, and in the cream only. So there are four pieces of information that we need to fill in or we need to determine who doesn't like milk or cream, because those people are going to be outside of the circles, who likes milk only, who likes cream only, and who likes milk and cream. Based on the information that we were given, we are going to start by filling in our Venn diagram in the middle, all right, in the intersection. We always start in the intersection. So if we start in this intersection, we know that 40 people like milk and cream. So we can put those 40 people straight into the center. So now if I want to fill in the rest of my Venn diagram, I can see over here in this circle, I need 110 people that like milk. In that circle already, I have 40 people. They're in the intersection, but they're already in the circle. So to get the remaining number of people in that circle, I'll say 110 people like milk minus the 40 that are already in the circle, in the intersection. So that gives me 70 people. I'm going to do the same thing for the cream circle. I have 72 people in the cream circle. 40 of them are already there. So I'm going to say 72 minus the 40, and that is going to give me 32 people. Now, if you look at these circles, I just wanna to talk to you about what each part of the circle means or part of the Venn diagram means. If we look at these 70 people here, they fall in the milk circle, but they're not touching the cream circle. So those 70 people like milk only. Looking at the 32 people in the cream circle, they're in the cream circle, but they're not touching the intersection. They're not touching the milk circle. So 32 people like cream only. The 40 people in the intersection like both milk and cream. But now that brings me to the fact that there were 200 people in the survey. So we want to know how many people don't like milk or cream. So we would take the 70 plus the 40 plus the 32 
and we'd subtract that from 200 and that would give us the remaining number of people. So we would say 70 plus 40 plus 32 gives me 142. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 200 minus 142 and that is going to give me 58 people and these 58 people need to go into my sample space anywhere that's not in one of the circles as people that don't drink milk or cream. So now in total within that rectangle I have 200 people. Now the question says what is the probability that a person chosen at random will like milk or cream and that brings me to and or. So if we're talking about and we're talking about the intersection so and talks about the overlap. If we talk about or we're talking about what's within the circles. So the probability of milk or cream would be equal to the total within the circles. So that's 142 out of the total number within the sample space, which is 200. And 142 over 200 simplifies down as 71 over 100. 71 over 100 or we could say 71%. The next question says, what is the probability that a person chosen at random will not like either cream or milk? So that probability are the number of people that don't like cream or milk. So that's the number of people outside the sample space. So that's the probability of not milk or cream which would equal the 58 people that are left over in the sample space out of the 200 people in the sample space. So that simplifies down as 29 over 100 or 29%. The question says, what is the probability that a person chosen at random will not like cream? So there are different ways to do this. So we could say the probability of not liking cream would be equal to 1 minus the probability of liking cream. Remember, probability is measured out of a total of 1. So it would be equal to 1 minus the probability of liking cream. And how many people are in the cream circle? There are 72 people in the cream circle, so 72 people that like cream, over the sample space of 200. And when I subtract those two from each other, I get 128 out of 200 people that don't like cream. So that simplified down becomes 16 over 25, or 64%. Now there's another way we could have done that, is that we could have said, what is the probability of the person not liking cream would be the probability of the person liking milk or the probability of the person not liking milk or cream. And we could add those two together. Okay, looking at the Venn diagram, it says, 160 people are asked whether they like soft drink A or soft drink B. And the results are in the Venn diagram. The first question says, how many people like both drinks? So in order to determine how many people like both drinks, we have soft drink A and we have soft drink B. We know that 160 people were asked. So our total is 160. We don't know how many people are in the intersection. We don't know how many people are in the overlap. So what we're going to do is we're going to add it all together. 33 in A only plus the X in the intersection or the overlap, plus the 65 people who like only soft drink B, and don't forget to add the 22 people that don't like either soft drink. So we would have 160 equal to 33, 65, and 22 gives me 120 plus X. To isolate the X, I'm gonna subtract 120 from both sides, so therefore X is equal to 40. So we would now know that there are 40 people in the intersection, 
40 people like both soft drinks, A and B. So we have 33 people liking only soft drink A, 40 people liking soft drink A and soft drink B, 65 people liking only soft drink B, and 22 people liking neither of the two soft drinks. The question says, determine the probability of randomly picking a person that likes brands A or B. So if we're looking at the probability of A or B, that could also be written as A or B, that will be equal to how many people are there within the two circles? So they're 33 in A only, 40 in the intersection and 65 in B only. So that comes to 138 out of the people that were asked, which was 160. So that simplifies down into 69 over 80. The next question says, determine the probability of randomly picking a person that likes brand A and doesn't like brand B. So likes brand A, but not brand B. That will be the probability of A and not B, which would be equal to the people just in the A circle. So that would be 33 people out of the 160 people that were questioned or surveyed which could give you an estimate of 21%. Determine the probability of randomly picking a person that doesn't like brand A. So the probability of not A could equal 1 minus the probability of the person liking soft drink A. 1 minus the probability of A. So that's the probability of all the people within the A circle, which is the 33 people that like A only, and the 40 in the intersection, which is 73 out of the total of 160. And that would give us 87 out of 160 for the probability of not liking A. In a marketing survey, 160 people were asked if they like two different types of chocolates. The first type of chocolate was orange chocolate and the second type of chocolate was caramel chocolate. The results of the survey are that 85 people liked orange chocolate, 62 liked caramel chocolate, 136 people liked at least one of the chocolates and X people liked both chocolates. So we're going to put this information into a Venn diagram. So we're going to draw our rectangular shape and I know that 160 people were asked about what chocolate they like. Now I need to decide, are the two circles going to overlap? Are there people that like both types of chocolate? And there are. So I'm going to put an overlap with my two circles. So it's orange chocolate and it's caramel chocolates. We have 160 people in total and 85 people like orange chocolates. So I'm going to put 85 people by the orange chocolate circle and 62 people for caramel chocolates. 136 people liked at least one of the chocolates and X people liked both. So we're going to start, you always start in your intersection of X people liking both chocolates. So we're going to have an X in the intersection. Now, when it says that 136 people liked one of the two chocolates, that is going to help us to fill in our missing information in our sample space because we have 160 people in the sample space altogether. So we have 160 and we know that 136 liked at least one of the two chocolates. So liking at least one of the two chocolates means that within those two circles, there are definitely going to be 136 people. So we're going to take the 160 and we're going to subtract the 136 of the people that liked one of the chocolates. And that gives us 24 for the sample space left over. But remember I said we need to fill in all four pieces of information in our Venn diagram. So we need the people that liked only orange chocolates, the people that liked both the chocolates, the people that liked only the caramel chocolate and the people in the sample space. 
that didn't like either chocolate. So we've already got them and now we need to work on the other three. Now, because the intersection is unknown, the intersection is an X, we're going to start with that process. We're going to start with the fact that it's an X, okay? So that means that in the orange circle, the full orange circle needs to total 85. It needs to total 85 people like the orange chocolate. But we have X in the circle. So that means that the people that like only orange chocolate will be equal to 85 minus X. Whatever X is, it doesn't matter what X is. X is unknown for the moment. So the number of people left in that circle will be 85 minus whatever X is. Which means that in the caramel circle, we need to have 62 people in total in the caramel circle but I already have X people in the caramel circle. I can see that I already have X people there. So that means that I'm gonna have 62 minus X is going to give me whatever's left over in the caramel circle. So now what I'm going to wanna do is I'm going to want to calculate what X is. In order to calculate X, I'm going to say 85 minus X plus the X in the intersection plus the 62 minus X, plus the 24 people from the sample space, don't forget them, needs to total 160. So this is just going to help me to solve for my X. So I'm going to know that the negative X and that positive X are gonna cancel, so I'm just gonna be left with the one negative X. So negative X plus 85, 62, and 24 gives me 171 is equal to 160. I'm going to subtract 71 from both sides, so negative x will equal negative 11, but that means that x, because I can divide by negative 1 on both sides, I have 11 being equal to x. So that means I can now go back to my diagram and fill in an 11 for the x, Orange only was 85 minus X, so 85 minus 11, which is 74. Caramel only is 62 minus X, X is 11. 62 minus 11 gives me 51. So now I've completed my full Venn diagram. 74 people like orange only, 11 people like both types of chocolate, 51 people like caramel only, and 24 people don't like either chocolates. Okay, the question says, what is the probability that a person selected at random likes only one of the chocolates? Okay, so only one of the chocolates would mean that they either like only orange or they like only caramel. So that excludes the number of people that like both orange and caramel, and it excludes the people in the sample space because they don't like either of the chocolates. So the probability of only orange or only caramel would be equal to the probability of orange which is 74 out of 160 because it's orange only plus the probability of caramel only which is 51 out of the total sample space which is 160 which simplifies down as 25 over 32. The last question says, what is the probability that a person selected at random likes one of the chocolates? So that will be the probability of orange or caramel, which will equal the 74 plus the 51 plus the 11, all over the sample space of 160, which gives me an answer of 17 over 20. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video, that you've taken down notes, that you've written stuff down, so that you're able to both draw a Venn diagram as well as interpret or determine probability from a Venn diagram. Remember, the more you do, the better you'll be. See you soon.